What's up, everybody? Paul the Comic Book Misfit coming at you with the latest review for 2017. We're talking about Sepultura's Machine Messiah. So this is the first video for me for 2017. Had to take a little break. Had to, to get some stuff taken care of with work, you know, the everyday life, pay some bills, you know, fix some light bulbs, take the dog for a walk, all that good stuff. Anyway, I'm back. I'm going to make some more videos. I'm going to be throwing them out a lot of great content. I need you guys to like, subscribe, share, email me, leave comments in the videos. If you want, set up Patreons and GoFundMes, send me cash, whatever is going to help me keep making this content for you. And because I like money. <laughs> anyway, Sepultura. All right, so... For those that don't know, Sepultura is a Brazilian metal group. They've been around for over 30 years. These guys are the heavy metal Van Halen. They've gone through personnel changes. They've gone through personal conflicts. This, this man, if, if anyone was going to talk about Sepultura and compare it to something, they compare it to a damn soap opera. They are so much drama. But that's all behind the scenes. How does it, how does it reflect onto this album? Well, Sepultura comes with drama and comes with eras. You have your thrash era. You have your your early, maybe like Slayer-esque era. The 90s was where they really hit their stride. They made a classic album called Roots. That was also the last album with original singer and guitar player Max. And ever since then, they've been trying to get back to where they were, to reach that same level of success. Now, people would say, well, how can they be successful and, you know, how, how can they have lasted so long and not be successful? Well, here's the thing. They've been churning out albums. They have a huge following in their home country of Brazil and worldwide. But as far as the American market, they don't, they don't have the same kind of weight that they used to. And to put it on record, these guys... I don't even know if they should call themselves Sepultura anymore. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a cool album. But it just doesn't have that Sepultura feel. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the music and stop talking about the previous efforts. We'll get to that in the end. We'll use that as a conclusion. So focusing on this record, Machine Messiah. I think really it stands out because of the production. Jens Bulgren... A uh, great producer who's done work with Amon and Marth and Opeth has really brought a lot of his influence into this this CD. Um, the opening track, you know, Machine Messiah, it has a really slow build, kind of churning, almost gothic. You know, it reminded me of uh, something from Draconian Times from Paradise Lost or anything off of like Watershed from Opeth, which is ironic because the guy, the producer worked on that album. But it was something new for Sepultura. It was something new for the for their for their discography. The guitar work was great. Uh, I really was surprised by Derek's vocals. The singer Derek Green, uh, I think, he has great clean vocals. You know, when he's just he's got this kind of tenor that adds a lot of depth. You know, to the uh, to the slow build of, of the guitar work. But then when he screams, when he has his growl, it, there goes the roller coaster. It's not the same. You know, I think he needs to focus more on some clean vocals. Um, now, second out, the second song in the album, I Am The Enemy, boom, whole 180 shift from that slow build from the first track. I Am The Enemy comes up and slaps you in the face with hard, hard thrash. Derek's voice actually redeems itself on this. Uh, Andreas Kisser, the uh, pretty much the only founding member left of Sepultura, or not founding member, but you know, veteran member of uh, Sepultura left in the group. You know, he throws out some great thrash riffs, but I think they're over. The entire band is overshadowed by the addition of drummer Eloy Casagrande. That guy can play. He's got some great double bass work, amazing blast beats. You know, I never expected to hear blast beats in a, a Sepultura album. But if there's going to be a highlight in this CD, it's got to be Eloy's drumming. Aside from that, some mediocre uh, songs here and there interspersed. I think the highlights 
will definitely be the opening track, Machine Messiah, the lead single, I Am The Enemy, and towards the end of the album, there's one called Vandal's Nest. Those are the ones that I keep coming back and listening to over and over. Everything else, it just seems like mediocre filler. You know, a couple of great ideas here, some great musical breakdowns, some interesting guitar riffs, amazing drumming, lackluster vocals. Again, if Derek were to change his, uh, his singing style and focus more on the clean vocals instead of his, you know, his gritty growl, uh, it's, it, it would make a whole different band. And that is what I think these guys need to do. You drop the Sepultura name. You're never going to be, you know, separated from what Sepultura was. You're never going to get out of that shadow. Let it die. Put Sepultura to rest. Go and form a new group and start fresh. That way you don't have to worry about living up to those expectations. You can still play stuff from the old catalog if you want. You know, you've got a huge discography of stuff. You know, you can play some original uh, material and throw in some crowd favorites. It would make a great show. But as far as Machine Messiah, I'll give it a 3.5. Decent album. Had some couple of good, uh, good tracks. Is it as good as some of the other metal releases, including thrash releases uh, like Brotherhood of a Brotherhood of the Snake from Testament? Hell no. Definitely not. Is it better than the shit that's on the radio? Oh, yeah, definitely. But uh, I'd say give it, a, give it a chance. Listen to it. It's not going to be one that's going to be in everyday rotation. But, again, I stand by That's just my opinion. I think this should be the evolution of a new group featuring Andreas Kisser, Eloy Casagrande, and Derek Green, and, of course, bass player Paolo Jr. But... Put Sepultura out of rest. You're just being in a dead horse. You're never going to recreate Roots. You're never going to recreate Chaos AD. You've been trying for 20 years to get out of that shadow. It's not going to work. So, Machine Messiah, I'll give it a 3.5. Listen to it on Spotify. I'll include the description uh, in the description the link to buy it on Amazon. If you're going to listen to it, listen to it the proper way. Give it a, give it a listen. Uh, I'm sorry. Purchase it. Buy the damn thing. I'm, I'm tongue-tied. Buy the album. If you don't like it, you can always trade it in. Give it to a friend. Whatever. But whether you uh, like the music or not, support it. You guy, These guys pour their heart and souls. Whether this reviewer doesn't like it, that's just my opinion. I'm sure there are, you know, for this one that's giving it a mediocre rating, there's a hundred people out there that are going to think it's the greatest thing in the world. And that's wonderful. That's the beautiful thing about music. But either way, do it the right way, purchase the music, purchase your streaming services. So, all right, that's our review for this week. I don't really have a whole lot more to say, but here it is. So anyway, stay tuned. I got more videos coming up. Like, subscribe, share, email, give me money. <laughs> this is Paul the Comic Book Misfit coming at you. Take care of each other. Godspeed, my friends.